Good morning. So welcome back or welcome to a Yoga with Kira. Um, this is day 15 of Emerge. Yeah, how do we connect the floor into our reach? Yesterday we were doing loads of up and I went, oh, we forgot about our feet yesterday. We didn't. But I was like, oh, how do we how do we pull from the floor or push from the floor? Um, it's great to come rest into a child's pose and we should begin. Come, come. So child's pose, your bum is back, your arms are long, or you can rest your head on your hands. And then just wiggle a little bit so you feel the sense of the weight of your body dropping back into your feet. And just that opening through the front of your feet. And taking a few breaths, really letting yourself. So I find when I really check in with the, um, the energy of my body, I resist things. And then I go, oh, look at that. So that's my tendency is that I resist. So noticing you, are you resisting gravity? Are you defending anything or minding anything? And if you are, maybe change your position or maybe soften. Can you feel like the whole of you is dropping from the back of your body towards the front of your body? That gravity is pulling you down, bringing you deeper, and that you're allowing gravity to move you. Your breath is expanding on the inhalation and then gravity and the exhalation move together and glide down into a deeper pose. So use your exhalation to glide a bit deeper. Nice. Coming up into your cat pose. Round your back, tuck your toes under, pause there. Now you're stretching through the back of your body. Let it awaken, let it arise towards the ceiling. Toes are strong. And even imagine you're just about to lift your knees off the floor. You're not going to, but have that sense of your legs are on because you're just about to lift. And when I do that, my deep lower belly engages. So instead of saying, engage your lower belly, just imagine you're going to lift your knees and you will connect naturally. Nice. And then arching your back. Point your toes, bring them flat. Round your back, imagine you're just about to lift your knees. And then arching your back, toes are flat. So as you feel that just about to lift your knees, I feel my hands on my spine engage in such a powerfully different way. You can let your knees float if you wish, but the energy isn't about lifting your knees. It's about oh, connecting into such a deep and powerful cat pose. Nice. One more time. Super. So this time, bring your right foot to the outside of your right hand. Hiya! <laughs> and then round your back like you're just about to, and have your back toe tucked under, like you're just about to lift your back knee off the floor. Nice. And then arching your back. Point the back toe, round your back, tuck your toe under, like you're just about to lift that back knee off the floor. Arch your back, point your toe. So just continue, rounding, arching. Nice, next time you round, tuck your toe under and actually lift your back knee off the floor. Squeeze your bum, open through the knee and feel the front of your thigh really opening. So now as well, Find your front foot and push it firmly into the floor. So as soon as I do that, my bum starts to engage. And I feel length through my spine. Nice. Almost drop your knee to the floor and then straighten your back leg. Bend the front knee more. So it's like you're bending the back knee, everything folds. 
And then as you straighten the back leg, your front knee moves away and creates more length. Fold, length, fold, length, fold, length. Nice. Push back into your downward dog. Create some space by wiggling through your hips. Connecting into your body. And draw back through your heels. Nice. Drop your knees down. Other side. Bring your left foot. <laughs> Channel your inner Miss Piggy. Fling that leg forward. Round your back. Tuck your toe under. Arch your back. Toe goes flat. Move my leg forward. Suddenly I am, I'm kind of confused about moving my foot. And I'm, there's a resistance in me. I'm like, why am I moving my foot? But I'm really trusting the neural connections. Imagine you're going to lift your knee off the floor. Oh, I've changed and suddenly it's more difficult. I'm, I'm always amazed at how little we can do sometimes. <laughs> Nice. Next time you tuck your toe under around your back, lift your back knee off the floor, bend your front knee more, push it deeply down into the floor of that foot, stretch the back leg, squeeze your right buttock. Both of my arms are really strong. I have a sense of really like that feeling of I'm about to lift my knee off the floor, which was what we had before, or rounding through the back. So you feel like you're trying to lift your belly higher as you squeeze through your bum. Just feel that, what happens in your body. Nice. Bend the back knee, folding. Straighten the back leg. Your front knee glides away as you do that. It's like, find the elastic of you. Bend the back knee, glide. Back knee, glide. One more time, back knee, glide. Step back, downward dog, creating length. Connection. Pause, really connecting down into your feet. Heels draw back. Nice. Drop both knees to the floor. Swing your right foot forward between your two hands. So to do that, you either lift your hand up or you rise up and swing your foot forward and then come down again. Lengthen your back leg. Turn your back foot so it's at a 45 degree angle. And then just bend and straighten that leg a few times so you know that your leg is an engaged leg and a powerful leg. Push down to the baby toe side, bring your right elbow to your right knee, bring your left hand to your hip. I'm just gonna play with the bending of the back knee again. So bend your back knee, so that folding. So bend the back knee, everything folds, and then straighten the back leg, and the front knee moves away from that straightening leg. Fold. Lengthen, fold, lengthen. Drop your left hand down towards the floor and then reach it up long and then turn your chest and your arm is outside your ear. Palm is facing the ceiling. Oh, facing the floor. <laughs> nice. Lengthen into that back leg. Find your baby toe side. Can you push into your foot and feel what it changes? Can you engage into the front foot and see, see what it changes? Windmill your left hand down towards your left side and then reach your right hand up towards the ceiling, reaching up, looking up. Nice, windmill down, right elbow down, left arm long beside your ear. And again, powerful into your feet as you rise up, reverse warrior. And then down. They call this extended side angle. I'm amazed I even know the names. <laughs> Reaching up one more time. Long, both hands down. Step back. Downward dog. Finding your way back into your downward dog. Have a bit of a wiggle. And then drop both knees and come rest into your child's pose. So just feel gravity surrendering you down as you surrender, maybe not surrendering, but as you exhale, can you glide deeper into the sink of you?
and you slow things down, you feel your body. Super cool. Hands to the floor, push back downward dog, creating length and connection through your body. Have a bit of a wiggle. You bend one knee, bend the other. Bend one knee, bend the other. Nice. Knees to the floor. Swing your left foot forward to the front of your mat. Both hands down, lengthen your back leg. Turn your back toes so that your 45 degree angle bend and straighten that leg a few times. So you really feel it's a strong and connected leg. Nice. Elbow to your knee, rising up. Both hands on your hip, or right hand to your hip, left elbow on your left thigh. So fold, bend the back knee, and then lengthen the back leg and let the left knee move more forward as you do that. So feel the elastic of you shortening and then elastic of you lengthening. Shorten, lengthen, shorten, lengthen. Nice. Sweep your right hand down and then long beside your ear. Feel the sense of long into the right side of your body. Left elbow is really strong and steady. Nice. So windmill your left hand, your right hand down towards your right side, and then rise up, reaching your left hand up towards the ceiling. And down, left elbow down, right arm over. And then change. And just begin to flow, connect, feeling your body as you move. Nice. One last time. <laughs> Super cool. Both hands down. Step back, downward dog, creating length through your body. Nice, bring your knees to the floor, come sit on the floor and have your legs long in front of you. And then bend your knees. So dropping both knees down towards the left. There's more weight into the left buttock. The right thigh has fallen in, left thigh has fallen out. Back to center. And then both knees down towards the right. More weight into the right buttock. Left thigh fallen in, right thigh fallen out. And then just travel from side to side. So as always, if you have your hands on the floor behind you, this is easier. If you have your hands off the floor, it's a little bit harder. Keep your hands up towards the ceiling, interlocking your fingers. It's even harder. So find your way of doing this in wellness. Like where is that place where you go, this is a really healthy and dynamic place for me to be. And with what I'm doing, I'll be able to turn up again tomorrow and move. So the continuity of the practice is more important than anything that I ask you to do today. So I was walking forward with my bum there. So I just pushed myself back. One more time each side. Nice. So drop both knees down towards the right and bring both hands either side of that right knee. Drop your head down and rest your belly down on your thigh. Can you exhale and sink a bit deeper? Inhale, feel the inflation of you. And then exhale, sink a bit deeper. Nice. Back to center, other side. Over towards the left side, belly comes down onto your thigh. So remember, use your hands as support, use your elbows to support. Find the way that you meet your edge. So each of us are meeting our edges and that looks different, but it should have a feeling that's similar across everybody who practices, which is that there's a attentiveness and an inner dialogue around, is this okay? Do I feel healthy? Am I feeling well? Can I move my fingers and toes? Can I still breathe? Can I be present? Oh, yes, I can. Great. <laughs> I come back to center. Stretch both legs out long, roll into your ankles. 
and then roll in the other direction. Soles your feet together. Hold on to your ankles, sitting up really tall. So how, when you, so I'm pulling on my ankles a little bit. So I'm holding onto my ankles. If you want to have a block underneath your bum or something underneath your bum or something underneath one of your knees, then do. And then as I pull my hands on my ankles, I'm imagining that I'm getting taller and taller and taller. And then I'm going to drop and round. And as I round, I really round my shoulder blades forward. My collarbones are rounding. I don't know rounding is the word for them, but they're doing something, my collarbones. My head is tucking in. And I'm looking down towards my feet. And then getting tall, pull backwards. I'm almost leaning backwards as I pull tall. Rounding forward. Sitting tall. So stay at this level, or we're going to do swan. Problem with, uh, problem with um, this pose here, as soon as you begin to lift your arms, your lower back will tell you about it. So see for you where your arms lift to, and then lower your hands down. So sitting tall, and just notice the moment when your lower back starts to change its shape to lift your arms up, and don't go to that new shape. Okay, so staying tall, Notice as you lift your arms where you can keep your back straight and move your arms to. So keeping your back straight is the most important part. Where in your body does your spine begin to change? Really listen, close your eyes. Where when you lift your arms, something changes in your lower back and stop before you get there. An interesting question. <laughs> I could stay here all day. <laughs> wow, it's so cool. So much information there. I never noticed before. It's so cool. Anyways, okay, so lifting your arms up, maybe for you, and then bend your elbows from that place into your swan. Okay. And then your arms come forward back to that place and then round forward towards your feet. Nice. Lift your arms up so your spine is still straight. Feel the place where you don't go any further. Pull your elbows back. Hands go forward, rounding forward. So your arms are not the most important thing. Your spine is more important. So I can go higher, but I'm just intrigued with staying a bit lower from my body, noticing without any strain on my lower back how it is to move my arms forward and backwards. Nice. Cool. Stretch your legs out long, roll into your ankles, big circles. And then we're going to twist. So twist towards the left, bring your right hand to the outside of your knee, twist deeply towards the left. My left hand is behind me. I'm really strong and long up through my body. Nice. Bring both hands to the floor. Imagine you can bring your nose or your forehead to the floor and then come back into the twist. Hands to the floor, forehead comes down. Twist. Hands to the floor, forehead comes down. Twist. Nice. Other side, over towards the right. Lengthening, rising through the spine. And then both hands down, forehead to the floor, twist, forehead to the floor, twist, forehead to the floor, and twist. Nice. Roll your belly in a deep, full circle. We feel the, oh, the deep, I'm going to say the deep bark of you. <laughs> just really lovely feeling into the spine feeling into the belly feeling into the whole of the length of my torso nice roll your shoulders big circle and then roll in the other direction nice sitting tall just drop your ear down towards the right and there's an attitude in the side of my neck which is like let your neck become delicious <laughs> for me it's like I go oh and I really soften and allow my neck to open and soften and receive or be more receptive on the, the opening side. 
and then other side drop your head down to the other side and really feel that sense of length the tone of texture in the opening side of your neck and then just travel slowly closing your eyes travel in one direction find that moment of surrender and then back surrender So when I find the moment of surrender, it actually affects the rest of the movement. My movement feels so much slower because I have this moment of softening. Very interesting how just a moment of something will impact the rest of the range. Nice, drop your chin down towards your chest. You let the weight of your head rest into your chin and into the back of your neck. Soften your feet, soften your shoulders. Nice, come lie on the floor. Come all the way down. Just take one minute to lie on the floor. Lying down, maybe draw your knees up towards you. Rock from side to side. Move, connect, deepen, breathe. Um, how lovely, how cool, very, very nice. Uh, I'll see you all tomorrow. Another wonderful day of Emerge. Um, yeah, nice. Oh, and I have a plan for April. It's, a, it's happening. I'm like, whew, cool. As always, I get really excited about the new one. I'm like, wow, it's such a great plan. <laughs> so I have a plan. It's emerging. And um, great. Thanks for being here. And uh, I'll see you all tomorrow. Another day of the continuousness of this practice. <laughs> uh, ciao, ciao. Bye.